power shy away, come to take the throne. To conquer world powers, bring Jake the home. I'm quarterbacking like Jake DeLone. Like Mount Rushmore, I gotta face a stone. All right, man. First and foremost, I'm gonna say, call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh. What's going on over here, man? What? All right, we're just gonna see it. First and foremost, I'm gonna say, call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai. And I saw praise to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, man. Let's jump right into it. Like, really? No, you should get Bobby 22. Say where you at? Because there's what's what's going on is like. You got a lot of people in this truth who are just being wicked behind closed doors, bro. Right. And it's just madness, bro. They'll, they'll post a lot of scriptures on the book. They'll, they'll basically fake the point. Same thing I've been talking about for a long time, but it just gets progressively worse and worse, man. Our people are just getting eviler and eviler. And they got fridges on. They got people with fridges on, they got, with on they got a full bread on their face, and they're evil as hell, bro. And I'll tell you why, because the, the, the reason why it's happening is because we're getting closer to the end. People are starting to bug out. Niggas right. coming in the truth talking about the laws, because basically the laws done away with just believe in Christ. I mean, it's Christianity, bro. And the niggas who, who preach uh, that we need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and behind closed doors are wicked and evil to their own families, those niggas are going to get put to death. You're just like Christians, bro. So go ahead and get this. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, 24 verse 13. But he that sucks. But he that shall endure to the end, uh, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound. Oh, since iniquity shall, where were you at? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I'm saying. Uh, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What? The love of many shall wax cold. The love of many, sh the, the love of many shall wax cold. Our people don't love each other no more. Man. Our people just hate each other. Even in the, even the, even in the truth, our people hate each other. People know they're Israelite. No need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and do wicked stuff behind closed doors, bro. And just be evil towards each other. Why? Because they're mostly because they're sinners, really. Because they're really not even in the truth. You don't do what you don't do what the book tells you to do. You need to think. Matter of fact, most of y'all make y'all's own God up, bro. You just know you're an Israelite. Y'all don't operate in the spirit. You don't operate in the truth of the of the Bible, because you will see that through your work. Give me, give me, hold that. Give me James uh, chapter two, verse eighteen. We're gonna bring that back out again, because that's how you that's how you know people really don't believe in what they say they believe in. People really don't believe in the Bible, bro. Just because you got, just because you changed your name to to Israel on the on on Facebook doesn't mean you actually believe in what you say. Verse Look at James chapter two, verse eighteen. Yeah, and man may say, "Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works." That's what they do all day. They show us their faith without their works. That's what they do. They say they, they say they, 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 they know they're Israel. They say they keep the law, statutes, and commandments, but you, you, you're you're hitting your wife, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. We have a guy. We have a guy like that. Where he, they, they're hitting their own wife, right? You have people putting away their putting away their kids and their wives. You got people still smoking, doing drugs, still doing cocaine. I've heard I've heard stories about that. Oh but they, they call themselves Israelites, right? You're not in the truth. You're not in the truth. You're deceiving your own self. Give me that. But that's James too. Yeah. Give me, give me James one and give me that James uh, one. And, and I will show thee thy, my faith by my word. Read it again from time. Yeah, and may may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And that's what that's what the brothers up here are doing. We're showing our faith by our works. We read what Yahweh Shai said. Go out to the highways and hedges, and look where we at right now, in the chief place of concourse. And, and the highway and the hedges, literally. The highway and the hedges. This street be busy all damn day, bro. We are showing our faith by our works. That's why we're out here waking up our people just like how Yahweh Shai did. And confounding, confounding the wise, man. What's up, man? You got a question? You just listening? You just observing? Well, I got a question for you. What's your nationality? Nationality? Mm -hmm. What's your nationality? Who are you descend from? Uh, where was I born? Well, I mean, like, who do you just like? What what nationality of people do you descend from? Like, there's a like, so-called black man, so-called Hispanic man, or what? 
who you sent for? Black man. So called black man came off shift, right? Me? I mean, like, like the, 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 the black people who came off the ship, you descend from them people, right? Allegedly. Okay, allegedly, right? What do you mean by allegedly, first foremost? I mean, I don't know much about my history, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? I assume it's the folks that came off the boat, bro. Now, watch this, right? Give me uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. There's a reason why you say that. Because the Chinese man knows his history. He can go all the way back down. The so-called white man can, can, can do his history all the way from here, all the way to damn uh, yeah, <laughs> Greece and all that. Can't trace it back you can't trace it shit. back. Now, why is that? Man, bro. And it gave me you know? <laughs> yeah, that's stripped from us. And guess what? The Bible says that that would happen. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. The Bible said we'll discontinue from our heritage. Our heritage goes into our land, our customs, who we were. We can't tell we can't tell uh, anybody. Huh? Who are they talking about? That's talking about the Israelites. This is something specific specifically supposed to happen to the Israelites. Because you have the like I was saying before, the Chinese man can tell you who where he goes with the descent from. African Israelites, What are you talking about? African Israelites? That's not what I said. What did you say? What, I what I, African Israelites. No, I didn't say African Israelites. Oh, okay. The Israelites dwelt in Africa for a time, if you want to say that. The, 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 the thing I'm trying to say right now is this this prophecy in Jeremiah the uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 4, it says the Israelites will discontinue from their heritage, their customs, their culture, who uh, their family members, like their basically everything that makes them them. And that happens to us as a, as a people. Because that doesn't fit the Chinese man, it doesn't fit the Japanese man, that definitely don't fit the white man. This only fits the black, Hispanic, and Native American man, the true children of God, the Israelites. How is that? What do you mean, how is that? I don't understand. Like, Why not? Why is it all three of these groups? <laughs> you said what? What's up? Okay, you said why is it these three? Why is it these three groups? Right. Because we fit all the curses that was supposed to happen to the Israelites. The Israelites are supposed to go on slave ships. That happened to the so-called black man. That happened to the Hispanic man in the 1400s. That happened to the Native Americans when they got shipped from America all the way to Europe on slave ships. That's supposed to happen to the Israelites. They got a yoke of iron put upon their neck. That happened to us and them. They also discontinued from their heritage. That happened to them and us. That's the three. That's, that's just a few. Their children got taken away from them. There was no might in their hand to save them. That's another curse that happened to all three of those groups. So why, why would they be as black? So you're saying all black, Native American, and Mexican are Israelites? What I'm saying is the Israelites come from those three, come from those three people. Is it possible that some of us might not be Israelites? Could be, yeah. Could be. Then how do I know that's me? Because, okay, check this out. Give me the Wheaton Terror real fast. You know what the Wheaton Terror is? Give me, give me Matthew 13 real fast. Because some of us are Israelites. Some of us could just be tares, at least look like Israelites. You know what a you know what a, a, a wheat and a tare is? Yeah. Like you know what you know what a tare is, right? Yeah, I mean the wheat is what you ship away from the shack, you know. Well, I mean the wheat is what you want, and the tare is the stuff you just ship the you ship away, yeah. So okay, well since you already know that, I'm just gonna just give you a, a brief a, a brief synopsis about it. So in the Bible, Christ talks about uh, the wheat and the tares. He talks about the wheat are gonna grow up. And it's going to be the time of harvest, and the tares are going to grow with them, right? Matter of fact, let's just read. So, book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24. And another, and another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sows good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Tares among the wheat, right? Because, okay, let's just let's just say it like this, right? These wheat, these these wheat and the good seed, that's talking about the Israelites. Like us us as a nation, not defiled by everybody else. Huh? Talking about no, he's talking about Israelites. Okay. I'll show you. I'll show you why he's talking about. Give me that. Hold them. Show me that. I know we're gonna stand right there. Give me that right there. Well, I'll show you. I'm not talking about believers. Hold up. Let me finish. Let me finish, bro. Bro, bro, chill out, bro. Chill out. Don't, don't come over here and just be. Just don't just, bro. We're dealing. We're dealing. If you're allowed to speak, but let's deal in order, bro. Okay, let's deal in order. Let me show you why that's talking about Israelites. Uh, this, this, this same book, same chapter, which is going later on in the verse. This thir Matthew 13, the parable of the tares and the wheat starts at verse 24. And at verse 37, that is when the disciples asked uh, 
Christ to explain the parable because they didn't fully get it. So this is him explaining what this is. The book of, of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 37, and he answered and said unto them, he that soweth good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are, good seed are, what? are the children of the kingdom. What? Children of the kingdom. The children of the kingdom. The Israelites. Huh? What was he? That's not, that's irrelevant to the point that we're trying to make right now. We're talking about the kingdom. We got to define what? the kingdom. We must define okay. the kingdom. Okay. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Come. The field is the, is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Children of the who? Of the wicked one. The wicked one. That's the tears. That's the, and who are those? Those are the people who look like Israelites, but they're not Israelites. They're not non believers. Bro. And he's basically saying the children. Matter of fact, right there. It said the, the, the good seed is the children of the kingdom. Let's see who the kingdom's for. Daniel, uh, it's not, it's not. Book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Yeah, I set up a kingdom, right? Which shall never be destroyed. Yeah. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Left to who? Other people. Left to who? Other people. Other people. Other people other than who? The Israelites, the saints. That's who the kingdom. Hey, I got a, Where's I got that a at? Where's that at? I wait, wait, no. Where's that at, though? Where's what? Where's that showing you that it's believers? Show, prove to me that it's believers. Right, out, out, of that, out of that chapter. I'm about to look it up. I don't know. I don't oh, know. so you don't know? Oh, okay. So no, you're just no. spewing out madness. Watch this. Hold on. Uh, after this, real quick. This, this is the book of Acts after Jesus died. No, yeah. Chapter no, 1, no, verse 6. Hold, hold on, brother. Watch this. Yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're, about to, we're about to give you this chapter. We're explaining who the kingdom is. When they, therefore, were come... This is the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 6. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, meaning who the world calls Christ, saying, Lord... Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Not to everybody. To Israel. This is even after he died and came back, he said, well, are, you, are you now going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? Why? Because the kingdom is for the Israelites. That's, right. <laughs> That's what he's talking about, which is the fulfillment of, hold on, which is the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. The kingdom is supposed to be built and not left to other people. Why? Because it's for the Israelites. Go ahead and speak. Can I, can I, okay, okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna keep reading from Acts 1 6. Okay. Okay. So Jesus now responds. He says, and he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Uh, right? It's not for you to know when the kingdom is going to come. But will you receive the power? But excuse me, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Uh -huh. And you will be my witnesses in, Je in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in all Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So what did that prove? That is proving that he wants Israel to go and tell the ends of the world about him. Where did it say that? At? That's literally what it where did, says. Well, no, where, did, where, did it say, where did it say he wants Israel to tell them, tell everybody else that the king was for them? Where did it say that? So we He's speaking to Israelites. That was specifically, specifically the apostle. He, I asked you a question. Um, well, let's keep going then. Go ahead. So when they had come together, they asked them. They had come together, right? Uh, yeah. This is literally talking about the ascension. This is Jesus' 12 disciples talking back to him. Yeah. And so, saying, okay, Jesus okay, before we get there, hold on, hold on. Before we get there, what does six, what did verse 6 mean? What did verse 6, read verse 6 and what does that mean? I got, I got two questions, really. What did verse six mean? You, you notice how, you notice how he, when he responded to them, they asked a specific question. When yeah. Going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Yeah. What does that, what does that mean, though? What does that mean? So remember, at that time, remember at that time, yeah, the Israelites were now being ruled by the Romans. Yeah. They were being ruled by the Romans. Yeah. They said, when are you going to put the Israelites back in power? Yeah. That was his question. Yeah. yeah. That was his question. Right? Yeah. Y'all agree? Yeah. Okay, cool. And he was talking to the 12 Great disciples. Question. Yeah. You agree? Yes. Okay. Now he responds to them and he says, it is not for you to know. Yeah. But he's basically saying, be less worried about when I'm going to come back and establish my kingdom and be more concerned with going out to the ends of the earth to Jerusalem, to Judea. He even says to Samaria. But that wasn't that wasn't our point. That was no no, that's not what he said. 
You got the straight verse? You got the straight verse? You got it? 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 I think it's 7 verse 8, right? Now watch this, right? Wait, hold up. Did he? Did he? Hold up, bro. Bro, chill out. Chill out. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. No, no, bro. Come on, man. You're not about to come up here and be a damn Christian and just talk over us, bro. Let's just, let's deal. Let's deal. Let's deal. Point for point, right? Let's deal. Point for point, right? Where in that did he say go to non Israelites? He said go to a place. He said you'll be witnessing in Judea. That's a place. Samaria is a place. When did he say go to people who weren't Israelites in that? That's what I'm asking you. But what do you think he wants them to do in those places? Talk to Israelites because the kingdom is for them. Romans 9. Romans 9 verse 4. They're scattered. No. They're scattered. That's why he said that. Watch this. Romans 9. Because that, if, if, hold up, hold up. I got you. If that, if that means go to non-Israelites, Paul is about to make no sense right here. Go ahead. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 4. Let me start at verse 3. For I wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to the bloodline, bloodline Israelite. Yeah. Who are Israelites? Yeah. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption that comes through Christ's death. So the Christ's death is for the Israelites. Yeah. And the glory. And the glory, the kingdom, the exalted state that we're talking about restoring the kingdom back to Israel. And the covenant. And the covenant, the old and the new covenant for the Israelites. And the giving of the law yeah. and the service of God yeah. and the promises. And the promises, the Abrahamic promises are pertaining to Israel and Israel only. Watch this. <laughs> Whose are the fathers? Yeah. Whose are the fathers, the Israelites? And of whom concerning the flesh, the bloodline descendancy, Christ came. Christ came for the Israelites, for the bloodline Israelites. So if we, were, if we said go to non-Israelites in these places, why? The new covenant isn't formed. The old covenant isn't formed. The Christ's death isn't formed. Like Paul literally said right there, freaking uh, the law isn't formed. Nothing's for them. So why would I go around and teach a non-Israelite when it has nothing to do with them? Now let's go back to to, 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 uh, to Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, which is going to tie it all together. Daniel 2, verse 44. Read it again. Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in, and in the days of this, these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Yeah. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. What does that verse mean? The kingdom shall not be left unto other people. What does that mean? You gotta read the context again. What's the what's the what okay, how's the context gonna change what that said? Bro, I got it, bro. I'm just saying, how is it that's a that's a that's a picture. Okay, one up there. One up there. Forty-three. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with uh Mary Clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of the men, but they shall not cleave one to another. Yeah. What's that mean? We read, we read one verse up before the, the verse that I quoted. What does that mean? Bro, he's basically saying that in that time, what he's telling them is that you should not intermingle. <laughs> 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 You're winging the hell out of that, bro. That's not the, you know about the, you know about Daniel 2 where it talks about the great statue? Where it's a reference to basically Daniel 7 about the beast? That's what that's talking about right there. That has nothing to do about intermingling. This is talking about the statue that's going to get, get destroyed. A re re representation of Babylon. This is a representation of Persia and Mede and Greece and Rome. That's what that's talking about right there. That's the context. So after all those kingdoms are going to get destroyed, that's the context of what 44 is talking about. Read it again. 44? Yeah. And in, and in these days of these kings shall be shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. <laughs> so after 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 that, after the days of those kings that's gonna get destroyed, the most high God's gonna set up a kingdom where? which shall never be destroyed. Yeah. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. What does that verse mean? The kingdom shall not be left to other people. That's exactly what it's saying, bro. It's so it's so the kingdom's only for one people then, right? Where does it say that at? Where's it that in there? That's in Daniel. Where's it say that at? Well, bro, you gotta look at the Bible in context. Okay, I, I, wait, wait, hold on. I looked at it in context. Oh, I, I got you. I'll, I'll show you in context, right? So, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. And, and Romans 9, what did Paul say? Bro, I can't quote scripture, bro. Let's read it again. Romans 9 again. We'll go Romans chapter 9. More context. And I'm gonna start at verse 4. Who are Israelites yeah. to whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption that comes through Christ's death. And the glory. Yeah and the covenant, yeah, and the old and new, and the giving of the law, yeah. and the service of God, yeah. and the promises. And the promises, the Abrahamic promises for Israelites only. Whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh, bloodline descendants, Christ came, yeah. 
who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. So Christ came for the Israelites. He literally came for the bloodline of Israelites, and that's it. So where do we get everybody coming in after that? Where do we get the whole this whole believers thing? Even the word church, right? The word church means a gathering of Israelites. Where do we get every where do we get everybody at? Can we look at Galatians 328? Oh, wait, 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 Hold up. Before we even go there. Before we even go there, what did what did Paul mean right there? Galatians 3. No, no. Where did Paul mean Romans, Romans 9. 9? We're not about to run to that until you don't so, explain that. So, understand. Jesus came to the Israelites. Uh, are you, wait, are you, are you explaining, are you explaining Romans 9 right now? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so, Jesus came to the Israelites. Yeah. That was his intended purpose. Yeah. Purpose. When he was here, he came to the around Israel. Yeah. Telling Israel about, about Israel. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they still did not believe. You know what I'm saying? They That's still not true. did not believe in him. That's not true. Why, who crucified him? The Romans crucified him. Well, that's why, one of them Roman that's why it's called a Roman crucifixion. Yeah, that wasn't an Israelite custom, that was a Roman custom. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, so the Romans Roman crucified custom. him. But the question is, why did why did he come here and the Pharisees and the leaders, the religious huh. leaders, did not believe it. Why did That's they not true. Some religious people believe it. Watch this. You got that job? Get that job. Get that job. Get that job real quick. John 11. Watch this. That's not true. No, no, it's not true. I'm going to show you why. Watch this. Watch this, right? Caiaphas. John, John, John. Where is it? Uh, 20? No, no, no. 30. 36. 38. 30. Where are you at? Right here. There you go. There you go. I'm going to start it. Since you like. You said, hold up. You, yeah, we'll start up. We're going to read it in context. You said the, the religious leaders warned him dead because they didn't believe in him. This is a religious leader. This is the book of John, chapter 11, and the context starts at verse 48. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees. Yeah, like I, you said. A council and said, what, uh, Slot, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone... All men will believe on him. Oh, all, all men are going to believe on him. I thought I thought nobody believed in him. But go ahead. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Yes. And one of them, yes. named one of them, the high priest, named Caiaphas, yes. being the high priest, yes. that same year said unto them, "Ye know nothing at all." Y'all don't know nothing. He said to all the other religious leaders, "Y'all don't know nothing." Why did he say that? Nor consider that it is expedient for us yeah. that one man should die for the people yeah. and not the whole it's like, and that the whole nation the whole nation of Israel perish not. So we right. knew what Christ's mission was. That's why he had him put to death. Because if he didn't have Christ put to death, he wouldn't have died so all of Israel could be saved. Or anybody could be saved for that most for that part. And this spake he not of himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. So he died for no, died for everybody. That <laughs> nation. Caiaphas, a religious leader who you said didn't believe in Christ, says he believes in Christ and knew his mission, and he said that he was going to die for that nation. Not everybody, that nation, which is Israel. And, and, and context proves it's talking about Israel because he said us. It's expedient for us. And he's a what? An Israelite. That's right. So he's going to die. He cut, it's, it literally cuts everything you just said. Just a minute ago, so, like, how do we do? How do we reconcile this? So Caiaphas is literally trying to talk to other, all his other people. Yeah, because they're looking at him and saying, "Nah, we can't believe this dude." But he's trying to go and convince all of them that Jesus. Well, I got them. But now let's go to let's go to Galilee. Wait, no, 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 you gotta go. No, 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 you gotta like you, know, you, like, you gotta deal with them. You gotta deal with being brought out, bro. bro you I'm don't have to do that. The no, whole no, time no, you have it. Switch no, you have it, bro. You never, you didn't deal with Romans nine. You didn't deal with what you did. You just lied. You literally lied just a second ago. You said that the religious leaders didn't believe in Christ. I literally showed you the highest okay, religious so leader believed in Christ. I saw you another leader who didn't believe in what he was saying. What difference does that make? You made a statement. You made hold up. You made a statement. And was proven false. How do we reconcile can I prove, that? Can I prove where it's true? Go ahead and prove where it's true. Go ahead. All right. Oh, man, I've been waiting for this. Real quick before you go, I, I want to establish something. In the verse that I read in verse 49, he said, Ye know nothing at all talking to the Pharisees. He's the high priest, meaning he's heavy in the Torah and in the prophecies. Do you know where it's prophesied in the Bible that Jesus was to come and die for, for to give a certain group of people? A chance at repentance. Do you know where that prophecy is at? 
don't want to switch. Dude. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, I'm, I'm not. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm not. I'm not trying to get you, brother, brother, brother. I'm not. I'm not switching on you. I'm simply asking to see if you understand what is being said. If you don't understand the context of why he is saying what he's saying, then you have no type of platform to say that that's not what's going on. If you don't, if you didn't know, the easiest one to go to is Isaiah 53, where it explicitly talks about a man coming to Israel and dying not for himself but for that nation so that way they can have a chance at repentance. That's why Caiaphas said, ye know nothing at all. Just like the Pharisees, you know nothing at all. Because you don't know the prophecies. As a matter of fact, also, hold on, one last thing before you speak. If you knew the prophecies, like, do you, do you read, like, Isaiah and Jeremiah and all that? If you under, if, if you really read that and understood that, you would know that salvation isn't for everybody. Because there's a specific prophecy saying that these people are going to go into slavery, that they're not going to they're not gonna be a part of anything, and on top of that, they're going to serve us. So there's, if you read that, there's no way you could come to that conclusion. So whatever, whatever matter of fact, boy, let's just get some of those real fast. Give me, give me, give me, uh... Ezekiel 37, real fast. Yeah, Ezekiel go. 37. You give me uh, what you got. Just stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Give me Ezekiel 37. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you understood the prophecies, you wouldn't come to this conclusion. Give me to where, where, where's 37. Where's the, where you at? Where's 37? 37. You know, to where it says in my servant, my servant David. That's 37. 37. That's a lot. 37. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and verse 24. And David, check this out, bro. I want you to break this down. Ezekiel 37 and verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Is, was David alive during this time? He's not even paying. Bro, bro. I want you to break this down. Could you? Okay. This is Ezekiel 37 and verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Is David alive? Is David alive during this? Ezekiel. Is King David alive? No, he's dead. So who is he talking about right here? Come on, man. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Who is that? Who is that talking about? Since David's dead, who is that talking about? That's talking about Christ, right? And David, my servant, will be king over them. King over them. This is future prophecy. That's talking about Christ, right? Okay. And they shall, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land and given. What are you looking for? Oh, no, it's in 25. It's in 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. That's talking about end-time connotation. That's basically talking about Christ ruling forever and ever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. With who? With them. With them, the Israelites. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. That's, that's, the, that's the key point right here. They'll set the sanctuary in the midst of them, the Israelites, forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will be their God, possessive, and they shall be my people. Right. Showing it's not for everybody. Watch this. And the heathen, the heathen, everybody outside of Israel, shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, and with my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Now why is that? Why does the heathen know that the Most High God is sanctifying Israel? <laughs> Israel, He's sanctifying one people. This is anti connotation. Why is it happening to one people? Why is that? You, well, you can't. I mean, are you are you hearing what it said? So you can ask a question after you deal with what's said. Because I know, because I know, I know, I know what you Christians do. You run to Paul, you run to Galatians, and y'all don't want to deal with none of the prophecies that really trump Paul, really, if you think about it. Because the prophecies come out of thus saith the Lord. You're trusting on Paul, like Paul died for y'all. They're talking beyond Paul. Yeah, they, these prophecies talk about way after what Paul's talking about. So that's what I'm saying. If you if you can't show me salvation for everybody in the prophets, it don't matter what Paul's talking about at all, really. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You can talk after you deal with the prophecy. You gonna deal with the prophecy, or are you gonna just be a Christian without saying the so called white man? man that's what you. That's really what you're doing. So here's my question. Here's my question. Are you gonna deal with the prophecy? Are you gonna deal with the prophecy, bro? There, there's no, like I. There's I'm nothing you can say. Arguing against the prophecy because yes, Jesus is going to come back. Yeah. 
and being for those who believe in them. No, that's not what that that's said. Not what that's saying. not what that said at all, bro. Okay, so I got a question. No, no, question. bro, no. We're not question. going. No, we're not going nowhere. You can do with that prophecy. Why did Jesus say, "I am the way, the truth, and the life"? And who did he say that to? Believe in me. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have everlasting. Life. And who did he say that to? A Samaritan woman. He said he said that to a Samaritan woman. Yes. Where did he say that to yes. Samaritan woman? John four, bro. He didn't say that in John four. He said that to the Samaritan at the well. Bro, he no, no, he did. Matter, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, let's go to the Samaritan woman in the well. Go to John chapter four. Go to John chapter four. Give me John chapter four. Start at verse twenty-two. But she's a Samaritan, right? She's an Israelite. Is Samaritan Israelite? They, they, that's the, she dwelled in the land of Samaria. She is an Israelite. You want me to prove it? I can show you out of the Bible she's an Israelite. What? Okay, so what are so, so all Samaritans are Israelites? No, but I'm saying she is an Israelite. Why is that? Well, I guess you go to John chapter because 4. Because she was in the land? This yes, is, this is John this. chapter 4. So anybody who's in the land of Israel no, is an Israelite. No, I told you, I can show you. Oh, look, chill out. I can show you in the book, the same chapter we're talking about, she says she's an Israelite. I'll show you. Okay, sorry, John chapter 4. This is the book of John chapter 4, verse 22. No, not so, not 22, right? We're talking about Samaria. Oh, it says right here. Okay, 21, the woman. Uh, God, verse 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. Oh, man. Wait till I want to give me more energy. All right, seven. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. She, it didn't say she was a Samaritan woman. It said she's a woman of Samaria. Just like how you're a man of Dallas. Jesus said... I, I'll prove it. You can laugh at it, but I'll prove it. Jesus said, Jesus said it unto her, give me give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away unto the, unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is, th how is it that thou being a Jew asketh drink of me, which am a, which am a, which am a woman of Samaria, for Jews having no dealings with Samaritans, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Why? Because she's Israelite. Right? We're going to prove it. Go to verse 11. God. Verse 11. The woman saith unto him. The woman. The woman of Samaria, right? The woman of Samaria said unto him. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence... From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our? Art thou greater? Are you greater than our father, the woman of Samaria, and Christ, our father who? Jacob. Who? Jacob. So she's a descendant of Jacob, right? Who is a descendant of Jacob? The Israelites. <laughs> Verse 12. Hold on, hold on. Verse 12. Art thou greater? Is she asking him right there? Are you greater than who? Then our, our spelled O U R, our, like our, like our people, our father, our father Jacob. So, what does that make her? She's an Israelite, keep going. Which gave us the well, which gave us, us, right, possessive, and drank, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. What's that? What does that mean? And his children. That means she's an Israelite because she descends from, da from uh, Jacob. She's like what she just said. Yes, so she's an Israelite. So your point is irrelevant. That's what I'm saying. Like Christian, y'all don't like. That's, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all like. I'm not trying to be. I'm really not trying to be rude. But y'all just jump to the New Testament and have no understanding on what the Old Testament is going. What's going on in the Old Testament? You have no understanding because you wouldn't ask the question that you asked. And really, if you wouldn't ask the question about the Samaritan woman if you read the chapter. If you, all you have to do is read the chapter. And like we just read the chapter all the way down to that, and it's proved that she, out of her own mouth, Jesus, she's an Israelite. Well, where are the Jews at today? We are the Jews. Well, where are, are they only here in America? They're scattered, where? like the Bible says. They're scattered where? Just, give me, give me Deuteronomy the chapter 28, verse 64. Give me Tobit chapter 13, verse 3. The book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says 64, verse, six, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Lord shall do what to the Israelites? Scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And we do that. We, still, we, we serve, Our people serve the cross. <laughs> we, our people serve, uh, they worship Caesar Bosch of this. 
this right here, and they're all wrapped up in muslin stuff, man, which is basically that rock. That's what the Israelites do. They're going to be scattered into all the lands and be worshiping that and be worshiping pretty much everything, really. Yeah. Our people worship everything. Just like how Jeremiah 3, chapter 2 says, man, as nations change their gods, which are no gods, but and our people why, turn our glory to. Why did, why did Paul go into Rome and Paul went to Paul went to Israelites in Rome. He did. <laughs> yeah. give, me, give me Romans chapter 4, 4 verse 1. You say, you, oh, you, you, say this, look, you say this, but I prove it every time. Well, Romans, Romans 4. Is, no, wait, no, we're going to prove that. We're going to prove that. We're going to prove if that. If we're all from one people. No, not, no, we're not doing that yet. We're not doing that yet. But, bro, I don't this understand the, why. Hold on, hold on, brother. The, the book's being read. The, bu the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, 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 yeah, our father. Yeah, you say this the Romans, right? The Romans, the people think they're white people, right? He said, our father, go ahead. As pertaining to the flesh, have found. Have found. Watch this, watch this, watch this, right? I'm going to read this in another translation. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. <laughs> Let me see this. Uh, read the GMT version of Romans 4. Oh, man. Let's see, if, let's see if these Romans are white people. The book of Romans chapter 4, verse 1 in the GMT. What shall we say then of Abraham, the father of our race? The father of our what? Race. The father of our race. So are these white people or are these Jews? They're Jews because they're descendants of Abraham. So he went. So Paul went to uh, he went to Israelites in Rome. Why? Because Christ died for them, and the kingdom is for them. Even better. Wasn't Paul a Roman? Oh God. <laughs> what was he? He, he? he said no. He said no. Paul, Paul was. I mean, was he, he not had a Roman, Roman affiliation? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he yeah. lived in Rome. Yeah, he had Roman affiliation. Just like how yeah, Israelites Roman. lived in Rome, so he had to go to Israelites in Rome. Just like, are you an American? You got American citizenship. You have an American citizen, right? right? Why do you have it? You were born here. Were your people originally from here? My mom, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm talking about our people before we were brought on slave ships. Were we here? They're from Africa. They're from Africa. But I thought you were American. Do you, you see the issue here? I never, I mean, bro. You I'm never, you never look at it like that. I'm born in America. Yeah, but the, the, you, you're missing this point. Like, you, your citizenship to a land doesn't doesn't denote your actual nationality. Exactly. Ever. Really, ever in the Bible. Exactly. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Or ever in, in, in anything, ever, really, that's just fine, in general. Bro. I'm cool with saying I'm from Africa, bro. I've had nothing to do with it. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, not, that's, that's not necessarily the, the point. The point is, no the, I'm, I'm saying that the point is that he went to people, he went to Israelites in this I place. Just, I think it's... I think it's hateful to tell the people that ain't from the devil, bro. Why? You said that. This whole conversation. Well, I never said that either. But why? I never said that. God said he hates somebody, so I mean, why can't so I say I hate why, somebody? Why can't white people be saved? So this, this, there it is. There it is, bro. There it is. There it is, bro. That's what I want to know. Wait, hold on, hold on. Chill, 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 right? Well, you want to know? Why can't Asian people be saved? Because Christ didn't die for them. That's why. Christ did it. He died for them. He okay, himself he said it. Paul said it. Everybody says it. All. No, he didn't. That's not what Paul said. Did Paul say that? Did Paul? Did Christ or Paul say that? Did Paul say that? Romans. Romans nine again. Romans nine verse five. <laughs> Where? Where? Who is he talking to? He died for what's the what's the context? Let's go look at the context. Yeah, yeah. context. Go ahead. You context. said context. It's over with. Man. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Let me get my precept. Go ahead, God. Is that so? Is everyone in the world covered in the blood of Christ? No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Romans 9, 5, God. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Let's see what Paul said. Whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers, the Israelites? And of and of whom, as concerning the flesh, the bloodline descendancy, Christ came. What does that mean? What does that verse mean? Came for the Israelites. And concerning the flesh, came. bloodline descendancy. Came Yes, Israelites. So it doesn't matter what the hell you're talking about in Corinthians. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it's just saying, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. How do I make sense of this, bro? How do I make sense of this? Um, it says, for the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he mm -hmm. died for all. 
that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him. How do I make sense of him saying all? Oh. Who's the us there? Who's the us? Who's the us? Bro, let me go up a little further. No, I'm saying, I'm saying like, who, like, now, according to your knowledge, who is the us he's saying right there? We can't just skip over possessive pronouns. Who is the us? I mean, that, that, bro, I'm going to be honest, it's a simple question. It's basically Paul and the people he's talking to. The people of the church of Corinth. So he's talking about the, the scripture that concludes that us, the, the, me and you, and the, yeah, Corinth. Where was Corinth? Huh? Where was Corinth? Corinth? It's, I think it's a, it's a territory of Greece. I believe so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. So what, is, what difference does that make? We've already shown you in the Bible that, we, we, matter of fact, matter of fact, go, yeah, correct. Just give me a couple minutes after one. Bro, bro, uh, no, let's take uh, it, bro. Uh, I, I need to know yeah. why he's saying we died for all. Okay, let me, can I deal with that? And I got a script. Let me look at scripture first, then I'll deal with that. Know that bro. Okay, I got you. I got you. Right? Come on, one, two, three, two, one, two, one. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 1. This is what Paul's saying to the church of Corinth. You know, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant yeah. how that all our fathers, all our fathers are again, our fathers, my fathers and your fathers, the church of Corinth, Corinth. were under the cloud and all passed through the sea yeah. and were all baptized unto Moses. Now, who, was, who was baptized unto Moses? He's talking about his forefathers. No, no. Who, who was baptized unto Moses? What nation of people? Talking about his fathers. No, 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 who are they? They're from Israel. The Israelites, right? So basically, read this again. Read this slow. Well, ten from the top. Moreover, brethren. Moreover, brethren. What was it? It was First Corinthians. What? First Corinthians ten from the top. Ten, 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 ten one. Ten, yeah. yeah. I would not that ye should be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. But what? How that our, our fathers. What does our fathers mean? That means that means Paul's fathers and their fathers. You agree with that, right? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. We're under the cloud, yeah. and all pass through the sea. Pass through the sea. What is that a reference to? That's a reference to the Exodus, right? So he's basically saying that their fathers went through the Exodus and were what? And were all baptized unto Moses. Who was baptized unto Moses? The Israelites. They all yeah. passed through the sea. So he's basically telling you, don't be ignorant that, that you're descendants of who? The Israelites. Because your fathers did this just like how my fathers did. And there's a reason for that, because they discontinued from their heritage when they got ruled over by Greece. Something you read, hold up, hold up. Something you read in the Apocrypha about the Greek captivity that the, that the Israelites went into. That's why they had, to, they had to be forced to stop calling themselves Jews. They had to force themselves to be calling themselves Corinthians, Grecians, all these other names that are outside themselves. That's why I say I don't want you to be ignorant that your forefathers went through the sea just like how mine was, because you're Israelites. So the church of Corinth are Israelites. It continues reading and yeah, in verse right. 5 it says, nevertheless, most of them God was not pleased when they were overthrown in the wilderness. What difference yeah. does that make? What, what, that, what, 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 which substantiates, which is showing you in the Exodus. The story of Exodus and Numbers. So what proof what, what, what does that what does that prove? <laughs> that, 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 that matter of fact, that proves my point more than it proves yours. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I, I still ain't got past the all. Okay, right. Okay. When I say when I say everybody, let's say I got a pizza, right? You got a house. You had a house. You had a pizza party, right? If I went in your house and said, uh, I went in the house and said, everybody here can eat this. Does that mean the neighbors can eat the pizza? But he said Christ died for all, bro. What did I just? Ask, what did I just? What did I just ask you? What did I just ask you, bro? What analogy did I just make? What did I just say just two seconds ago? Bro, you're talking about the people in the house. Okay, do you, you're playing, you're really, you really are playing semantics. Just answer the question. Bro, just answer the question. Hold up, the hold up, hold up. What did Paul say? What did Paul say? In, oh, okay, wait a minute, right? Let's, let's get this straight. Let's get this straight, right? We just read you in Romans 9, which you were free, Romans 9, verse 5, that, that Christ died specifically for the Israelites. Now you're going to Corinthians, where Paul is speaking again. Now he's saying he died for everybody. Which is it? Is Paul, being, is Paul a schizophrenic, or do you not know what the hell you're talking about? It's one or the other. What is it, bro? What is it? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, give me a job for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's what I'm saying. We can't, but, but no, before we get that, we can't jump past that. You already agreed. You already agreed Romans 9 verse 5 said that Christ died for Israelites and Israelites only. So how are you going to jump to another verse that Paul says something anyway, opposite of that? Jumping around all these so wait, so how, do we have, so how do we have both of those, bro? How, how do we have a verse that says Christ died for Israelites only and a verse that says Christ died for everybody? From the same person. I don't see where it says he died for the Israelites. You just said it in Romans 9 verse 5. Whoa. You agreed to that. 
Hey, hey, bro. You know this camera rolling, right? <laughs> we we gonna do it. You you gotta run that back. You have to run oh stuff back. Ricky, run him inside again. Run him inside again. Words of Christ? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, hey, when brother, when wearing the blockbuster shirt with the beard. When the letters are red, you know, speak, you know what's funny? You know what's funny, right? You know how these guys wearing a blockbuster shirt, right? You know what happened to blockbuster? He got, got shut down, bro. It's like, it's like shut down. Hey, brother, when you're reading the Bible, when you're reading in the New Testament, I'm hold on, hold on, brother, 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 real quick. You actually are people. Brother, brother, brother. Hold on, wait, wait, wait look, we're, we're not doing this to be rude. We're doing this to edify you, my brother. Brother. I, I have. Do you want to deal? Do you want to deal? Or you gotta walk away. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 bro. Do you want to deal? Why don't we, why don't we make a shot, bro? Why don't we make a shot? Because you came up here. You came around. I'm saying. I'm saying. Come on, man. You're a grown man, bro. Why don't we take a personal shot? So you take a personal shot. Make fun of your blockbuster shirt. You can't take a joke, bro. That's a joke. You ain't never taken a joke before. Come on, bro. So, so blockbuster shirt is personal. I don't feel any type of way. Bro. I deal with people like you all the time. All the time. You, you go in a Christian church, you shirk and jive, you pretend like you get the Holy Ghost and you think you know something. But you don't, don't, you don't know nothing, bro. Uh, no, you, don't. you do be with them, bro. You believe in the same exact thing they believe in. Is that, that Christ right there? Bro. I don't know what that is. Yeah, you know. That's not him, bro. That's not him. Go ahead. Let's read Christ's words. clearly a colored man, bro. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's read Christ's words real quick. Now, when the text is written in red, Christ is speaking, right? Yes or no? All right. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. And he answered and said, I am not sent, but. I said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep. Of the house of Israel. <laughs> what did Christ say right there? You've been on the camera, the camera bro. On the camera. <laughs> You're on the camera right there, bro. You don't want you don't want your family members to see you getting cut up before the prophets, bro. That's what this is. Is that what this is, man? You know, man. I know. I mean, I mean, I've been confounded before, bro. I know. I know it hurts. I know, I know it hurts when you, when you when you find out you don't know what you're talking about. You got shut down like blockbuster, bro. I'm just saying, bro. I know. I know. It's, I know it's a bad feeling, bro. You, like, they, they told you, know, I've been told that y'all, y'all do this, you know what I'm saying? What's up? You hop around for different scriptures, bro. I don't hop around shit. You won't allow me to stay on the scripture, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I told you to break down Romans 9 three, th three times already. You didn't have a deal. <laughs> three times already. Three times. You you haven't break down any scripture we brought up, but you want us to read your read your scripture so you can say Christ died for everybody at fifth o'clock. I know that's what you want to do. I'm not gonna let you do that, man. I'm gonna let you see. I want, I want the people. I want the people on YouTube to see you squirm, man. I guess that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see, bro. Go ahead, man. We done. I guess we done. Because people like you, we, we can't. It doesn't matter if you if you read scriptures like you read scriptures verbatim out of Christ's mouth where he said I came for Israel. You see Paul saying I came for Israel. You see all the prophets saying I'm going to put everybody outside of Israel in the captivity and save Israel. If you can't grasp that through the scriptures, through the multitude of scriptures we read, there's no saving you. I'm fighting against God trying to reason with you. You're stuck in Christianity. This is what you worship. You say Christ. You say Christ is a black man, but when you try to save everybody in the Galatians, this is what you believe. That's right. Because read the hold that sign up. Hold that sign up. Because of that right there, because of the so-called white man who put your ass in slavery. That's why you believe what you believe. That's why people believe what they believe. Well, what they believe about, plantation what slavery. Kings, though, what about what about the they African kings? Then, what what matters that what does that matter? They played a part in that. Did they give you did they give you that? Did they give you that? Bro, did they give you that? Did they give you this? Did they give you this? Did the black people give you this? Did they give you this or not? Did they give you this? See, that's what our people do. They save the so-called white man. They go jump on their own, jump on their own sword on it for their own people, bro. Give me first Maccabees. Damn this nigga, bro. Give me first Maccabees chapter eleven verse twenty-one. But you hate your own people. When you want to save the so-called white, hold that sign back up again, bro. When you want to save the so-called white man, the same people who rape your people, the same people who rape your women, the same people who, who murder you every 28 hours, you hate your people. And niggas like you can't be saved. That's why you niggas need to die, bro. We you hold that, you got the sign here. Yeah, get this sign right here, bro. This. This happened to us. You want to say the same people whooping us, bro. You want to say the same people who brainwashed our women to whoop us. That's who you want to save? You want to say the same people who stand on our necks till we die? You want to say the same people who walk inside of our households and then try to murder us and say they're justified? That's who you want to save. But you don't want to save your own people. Give me, hold up, let me get the gospel real fast. Give me Isaiah. 
Give me Isaiah 61. Let's go into the gospel real quick. There we go. Let's go into the gospel. You got that hate down, hate down people. Yeah. Go ahead and read that. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. Then certain ungodly persons, ungodly niggas, who hated their own people. Yeah. They did what? Hated their own people. They hate their own people. Our people have always hated our own people. That's why they do this. That's why they do this right here, right? That's why they do this right here. As a matter of fact, you say you love this, right? I love my people. <laughs> you don't love your people. Love you can't, who are your people? Who are your people? Who, who else are your people? Who, who else? Is the so-called white man your people? Those, those guys over there, they your people too. Yeah, are they your people? I love you, bro. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. And if everybody's your people, you don't have a people. You love the so-called white man, you love plantation Christianity. We're reading the gospel. We're reading the gospel. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 from the top. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Good tidings. Just talking about the gospel. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. The captives. Everybody is not in captivity. The so-called black man and Hispanic and Native American man is in captivity. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance. And the day of what? Vengeance. And the day of what? Vengeance. The day of vengeance on the so-called white man you're trying to save. The gospel is the destruction of the so-called white man. The gospel is the destruction of America. The destruction of these churches. The destruction of the, uh, the Asian man. The Japanese man. All these kingdoms, man. Give me, give me Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. This is a, that's what the gospel is. That's what these niggas don't understand. You think you think jumping up, jumping up and down and running down the pews is the gospel? That's you, that's you worshiping and praise and worshiping, the, worshiping the God? Damn all that, bro. This book is about death and destruction to the so-called white man of the other nations. When the liberation of the Black, Hispanic, and Native American man. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. What? Thrones were cast down. Thrones were cast down. The rulerships of all the, uh, the, the, the main rulerships of the world are going to get cast down, and who's going to sit there? And the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days did sit, which is the most high God. Go back to go back to uh, go to Daniel chapter 7, go to uh, verse 18, I believe. Uh, okay. Go ahead. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Do what? Take the kingdom. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. We want to talk about believers. What does the word saint mean? It's kodash, set apart. The people who's been set apart. Who's been set apart by the Most High God? The, the Israelites and nobody else. You can't go to Paul and show me somebody getting set apart. You can't go to Christ's words and him showing somebody else being set apart. The only people you see set apart in this book is the Israelites. The, who, the, the, who the book was written by and who the book is for. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth and look, the truth of the fourth beast. Which was diverse. They wanted to something different. Huh. But we shall take the kingdom forever and ever. That's what this book is about, man. It's not about hugging hands with your oppressor. It's not about hugging hands and going, going to church on Sundays and throwing money in the, in the, in the collection plate. That's not what the book is about. Right. Read this again. Go back to the top. Here you go. There's something for you. Okay. Uh, six to, one. Uh, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power. To comfort all that mourn. Who is the gospel for? To comfort all that mourn where? To appoint unto them that mount in, that mourn in, in Zion. Who? Mourn in Zion. Israel, because that's who the gospel is for. To give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of uh, heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Give me the, the garment of what? Read that for the uh, uh, The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness. The black, Hispanic, and Native American man, as a whole nation, we have the spirit of heaviness. When you see our people aborting their aborting their children, and then having our people just celebrating twerking, having two or three year olds twerking on, on Instagram and stuff like that, that's a terrible sight to see, man. Right. We have the spirit of heaviness. You see people putting away their wives, people abandoning their children, you see people murdering each other, hating each other, but you want to turn around, you want to turn around and give the so-called white man all your attention. We have the spirit of heaviness. We need to be saved, not the so-called white man. Keep going. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Verse 4, and they and they shall build the oasis 
Five. Verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. What is the so-called white man going to do? Feed your flocks. You see the people over there? That's the people who are going to feed your flocks. These people walking by the so-called white man, the Asian man, the Japanese man, they have Elamites. All of them are going to feed our flocks. The gospel is about slavery of the other nations. The gospel is about the liberation of the black, Hispanic, and Native American man. That's it. That's what the good news is. The good news is you're not going to be a nigga anymore. The good news is you're not going to be a spick anymore. You're going to be a king and a priest. That's what the gospel teaches. Not salvation for the same people murdering you. Not salvation for the same people who put drugs in your neighborhoods. The same people who put guns in your neighborhoods and complain when you do the drugs and complain when you murder each other. When you make you put us in that position, bro. Free. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen yeah. and your vine dressers. Shall be your what? Vine dressers. Vine dressers. You are going to work the field, Esau. And the other nations, you're going to work the goddamn field until I have done with you, man. Right. You're gonna you're gonna take rocks and break them into smaller rocks. You're gonna do you're gonna do really laborious work for no reason just because I feel like it, man. Right. Why? We had to do that. We had to do that during this. You took our women, our pregnant women, who were just about to have children, cut their goddamn babies out of them, and then stomped on them in front of all of us. And you're supposed to get salvation? There's going to be no salvation for the so-called white man, bro. Matter of fact, I changed my mind. There's going to be salvation for the so-called white man when we rule over y'all. Because y'all can't rule y'all's own damn selves. Y'all pollute your own land. You pollute your water. You pollute your people with the doctrines you do. Everything you do is foolishness. That's why you shouldn't be ruling this world. That's why the world's dying with ever since ever since the so-called white man's been a rulership, the world's been dying, bro. Just and, and, and you're killing the ecosystem. You're killing the foods. You're making it so some foods can't even you 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 you're destroying the uh, destroying and polluting the food so bad that some plants can't even grow by themselves, bro. Can't even like y'all can y'all can't be y'all can't exist to rule anymore. But who's gonna rule? The Israelites. We're gonna take the kingdom and possess it forever. Verse 6, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Yeah. They shall call you the ministers of, of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And what? Eat the riches of the Gentiles. And this is why I don't give a damn about the Gentiles or the coin, uh, man. Nobody cares about them. No, I, I don't care about them because what's going to happen? I'm going to eat the riches of the Gentiles. You're right. going to bring your gold. Give me Isaiah 60. Let's get that real quick. Give me Isaiah 60, verse 10. Let's go ahead and get this. Book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. The sons of strangers shall build up our walls, the so-called white men in the other nations. And their kings shall minister unto thee. For in thy in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Our gates are going to be open continually. Our gates got to stay open, man. Our gate, we can't close our gates without you. We can't close them damn gates, bro. They, we, I was you why we can't close them damn gates. Read this. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. The forces of the Gentiles. Look at the Hebrew words right there for forces. That's your wealth. That's your money. That's your substance. Our gates can't be closed because we need that, man. You got it. I want it. I'm taking that shit, man. That's what's going to happen. Right. That's why our gates can't be closed without you. It can't be. We can't close them damn gates. That's going to be that, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the reparation. That's, that that's, that's, that's the reparation. And that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. So wait a minute. I saw this is this is end time connotation. If everybody's gonna get the kingdom, why is it saying this? Read that again. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee yeah. shall perish. Uh, what? Shall perish. Yeah. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Shall be utterly wasted. Salvation isn't for everybody. Salvation is for the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans and the Israelites scattered abroad. Right. I always say greetings to you. Give me, give me, hold that. No, you, you stay where you are. You stay, you, you stay there. Give me, give me James chapter one, verse one. That's why we say salutation to the Israelites everywhere when we put these script, you put these scriptures on the internet, because our people need to hear this. Our people need to hear that they are Israelites scattered amongst the nations. The book of James chapter 1 verse 1. James is serving a God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Greetings. That's what we do. Greetings, Israelites. 
greeting the Israelites in New Zealand, or the Israelites in Japan, or That's wherever right. we've been scattered from. That's right. That's what we're saying greetings to when we put these videos up. Because this kingdom, this kingdom, uh, with the so-called white man's kingdom, cannot fall until this gospel, this gospel, right? This gospel is preached to the ends of the world. Give me Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Let's get that. Matthew chapter 24. And let's prove exactly what I said. We're just going to go back into what I was talking about in the very jump. Matthew 24. About the, 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 the priest to everybody. Where is that? Uh, no, 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 no. Go ahead and get that. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, and verse 7. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of righteousness. This is going into Isaiah 61, where it talks about the day of the, the day of the uh, of redemption of his people and the day of judgment. Go ahead. So look, verse 7 again. So so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous yeah. and destruction of the enemy. Destruction of who? The enemy. The destruction of the enemy. So if our people want to say, like, why are y'all going so hard on the white men? Why are you going so hard on everybody who's not an Israelite? Why? Because I have to accept the destruction of them. Yeah. If I want to be saved, I can't, I can't, I can't negate that. I cannot negate that. God. So of that people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemy. The destruction of the enemy. That's the gospel. That's what the Bible teaches. Did you get that? Verse 8. For wherewith thou didst punish our adversaries, by the same thou didst glorify us, whom, whom thou hast called. Oh man, I don't know why I stopped at seven. That's a great one. Whom he has called. Talking about the Israelites, man. Hold up, let me get this. Gospel. Preach. The gospel preached. Hey, hey man, get out, bro. <laughs> no, no, stop, stop, stop. Okay, come on, come on. So I'm done. I can't even. Oh, no, you no, good, I, mean, man. I mean, I mean, get out as in the reference to the movie Get Out. That's what I'm talking about. Like, like, get out of Christianity. Oh. Get out of Christianity. Talk about Christianity. Get out of Christianity. Read this. What's your name, bro? Yadi. Yadi. Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you too, man. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be read or write. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's why it's very important for us to make these videos so Israel can see. The Israelites are scattered in New Zealand. The Israelites are scattered in, in uh, Jamaica or Japan. The Israelites are scattered everywhere. And if this gospel doesn't get preached to them, the end will not come. We will get stuck here. That's the whole purpose of this. That's the whole, like, people say, like, where's y'all's crowd at? It's not about y'all. It's not just about y'all. We got a camera right there. We got thousands of people. We got video. We got videos that almost hit 100K views, bro. Ain't nobody worry about you silly niggas. Somebody got to be the two-thirds. Somebody got to get put to death and all praise is for it. But you niggas was born in vain. Give me that and, 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 uh, and Ezra. I got you, I got you. Give me that. And I'm going to finish up right there. Uh, Damn niggas, bro. Niggas, Talking about the, uh, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse twenty-two. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. What? Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. We're gonna wash our hands, you silly niggas, bro. We're gonna wash our hands with y'all, man, because we warned y'all. We told y'all salvation is for you. We told you, you need to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. We told you, you got the only living and true God. If you don't wanna, if you don't wanna accept that. If you don't want to accept that, you're going to get put to death. Right. We're just going to let you perish then because you were born in vain. There's no purpose of you being alive because you're going to get put to death in the, in, in the, on the onset of this, bro. Uh. Go ahead and give me that in 2 second, second, second Chronicles 15, <laughs> verse 13. <laughs> I wouldn't remember that unless you were standing right here. That's the only reason I remember that. It's one of the best scriptures. <laughs> the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 15, and verse 13. That whosoever would not seek Yahweh, power of Israel should be put to death. Be what? Put to death. Be what? Put to death. Well, if you don't want to seek the Lord God of Israel, Yahweh, that name has power in it. That's why we use that. If you don't want to seek Yahweh, God of Israel, not of everybody, you're going to get put to death. If you don't want to keep these law statutes and commandments, you're going to get put to death, man. If you want to say the law is done away with, and you want to, you want to walk around talking about some manager doctrine, talking about the, the 12 tribes chart, and talking about uh, Negro-only stuff, and have no works behind it, you're going to get put to death. 
Right. If you're not seeking the Lord God of Israel, that's it, man. That's the grand finale. Read that, again. that whosoever would not seek Yahweh power of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. The whole goddamn family, bro. If you, if you want to raise a whole family of niggas, you want to raise a little daughter of niggas, you want to raise a son of niggas, your grandma, if they want to sit there and eat pork all the time, matter of fact, you want to go to you want to go to uh, church on Sunday, after that, y'all say that's y'all savage, go to church on Sunday, then go out to Louvre's and eat a pork sandwich, you're going to get put to death. Your grandma, your granddad, you, your wife, your children, everybody can get it. Y'all niggas deserve to die if you're born in vain, bro. Right. So with that, I'm going to say call on Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, and Mawak Lava Ball, man. Mawak Lava Ball.